So, leftist ideology, reformist theory. So the two of them are complementary. They go together and they are inseparable. If you are a leftist, you are thinking, if you belong to the leftist ideology, then automatically you are also thinking in better direction, in a more unique direction. You don't want to do it in the usual way. You want to you want to do it so that you have a better society that you can hand over, that you can also say, thank God that we now have a better country, we have a better society that will be that will treat us as a first class citizen that we will also be recognized as stakeholders in the task of nation building. Then, the, 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 the reformist theory now, we, that means we are bringing in policies. We are bringing in policies adequately enough to equip and equip and re-engineer a society that has been bastardized. Everybody now see corruption like, like, like it, it is part, it has now been part and puzzle of the society. Like it is no longer a crime, like it is no longer a sin, which is a crime against the state, which is a crime against the society, which is a crime against humanity, which is an absolute crime against God. No wonder the country is wallowing in abject poverty. No wonder the, a country that is rich, that is rich, that is beautiful, that has enough resources, the people are wallowing in abject poverty. They are wallowing in pains and agonies, overburdens, and therefore nothing, nothing tangible is happening. Nothing good is happening. Twenty-four hours of light is zero. No water is zero, and the water that is even available is not quality and is not qualitative enough. The economy bastardized. A country that is rich, an oil and gas producing nation, that is number four or five in OPEC. OPEC member nation, wallowing in poverty, buying, uh, buying the PMS, the, uh, the, uh, the premium motor spirit, as costly as 18 naira, when we're supposed to be buying it at 10 naira. Even countries and nations that are not even as rich as us, they are buying it in less than a dollar. It means a lot. It calls for a regenda. It calls for us thinking and putting on our thinking caps. And looking at ourselves, how do we re-engineer a country that is that is dying, a country that is that is in a serious ailment? What are the youths in that country doing? What are the individuals in that country doing? A country that parades several millions, thousands of professors who are who are, who are, who are, who are, 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 are highly nourished, but zero productivity. Contribution to, to contribution to, to, to economic growth, contribution to scientific and technological growth, the advancement that would have reshaped the country better is zero. So therefore, we need to put on now our thinking cap as forth and look at it. We don't need 100 people to, to change Nigeria for better. We only need just a few people that will change Nigeria for better. Just a man will do it. Just an individual that is privileged. To get the people's mandate, to get the people's support, to get the people's, to get the people key to his ideas and ideology, we change the narrative for better. And we will, at the end of the day, smile and say, God bless Nigeria. So therefore, in other parts of the world, Mahatma Gandhi of India changed India for better. Today, a lot of us, a lot of our people go to India to study. India has taken over, have contributed immensely into science and technology. They have been so creative that they are even the ones producing most of our herbs, which has been enough for them to generate income, IGR. Indian has been able for some, for some, for, for if you were 50 years ago, they were all over in Nigeria teaching in secondary schools, even with their PhD degrees. But at a point in time, they went back to their country, and you saw that their country changed for better. A single man, my Tamagaldi, who today has been referred as been referred or regarded as the father of the nation of the Republic of India. 
it his ideology was thinking first the country thinking first a greater indian than personal self give it to india when it comes to medicine when it comes to using local using local materials local additives local raw materials to produce the drugs that we now use today that we now consume in all our hospitals in nigeria meanwhile we have trained a lot of pharmacists who cannot even produce who are not even who are not even allowed, who are not even who have not been effective enough to produce our drugs for us look at china Jumping, just a man looked at India and said, and uh, China said, we can get a greater ga Ch China. Chinese people were so impoverished, they were living in poverty. About five decades ago, but look at it in recent decades. In recent times, less than 20 years, Chinese now has dominated the world in terms of science and technology. Hardly will you find a home, hardly will you find an household in every part of the world, in Europe, in America, that you not find a Chinese product. It was the handiwork of somebody who saw, who felt, who knew that China can, do, can be better and greater. And so today, they have come back to their country. They are so creative enough. They have, they have they, 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 science and technology has even become their religion. And so, therefore, they have shattered the new course. They have done what they, they, they have brought themselves into the limelight. And today, they are dominating, competing favorably with other developed and advanced countries of the world. You cannot put China behind. They are at the forefront now. Close to us in South Africa, somebody led the cause. We all know the story of apartheid. We are the people of the country, the original owners of the country, who are Africans who are blacks, were treated as second class citizens in their own land. But somebody said, no, it must not continue. He lost his yearly marriage. He went into prison. It was made to pay a price, but you can kill the messenger, but you will never kill the message. The message was spread into the hinterland, across the length and breadth of South Africa. But young and old clamored for that freedom. And today, South Africa is number one in Africa. My people, are we going to continue like this? Should we not look into look in the direction of the leftist leftist ideology and the reformist theory combined together? So therefore, in the task of nation building, that we need to shut the course of a leftist theory, a leftist uh, ideology, and the reformist theory. And so therefore, we will be able to build a better country. Nigeria can be better. Nigeria can be greater. We deserve a better country. We can have it. It is possible. But we cannot continue to sleep and fold our hands and not part, and not contribute our quota to it. So therefore, my people, it is a clarion call now. We need to uh, we need to take our destiny to our hands and prepare a better Nigeria for our children. So you will ask me, what are the you you, you you the 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 lifestyle of a typical leftist ideal a, a, a typical leftist? He does not think the way others thinks. He thinks in a more unique way that will be most effective, efficient, and result-oriented. Whatever task you are doing that will not yield you a result that you expect, a good result, then it is not worth doing it. So therefore, 